What's up YouTube and welcome to the next episode of my Gamer Pro Tip series. Today we're going to be attempting a laser uh, replacement on a US Turbo Duo system. So basically the symptoms I'm having with my Turbo Duo currently is the discs will load, uh, however the load times are incredibly long and I'm also getting a little bit of sound skipping on some of the cinema scenes in a few of the games as well. I'm um, hoping this will address the issue. There is also some potential that um, the potentiometers need to be adjusted on the system after the laser is replaced. I probably won't go into that today, uh, but that is another tweak that I've read about online that may need to be done after this laser replacement. But if all goes well, uh, we'll see how this goes, and hopefully I'll have my duo up and running disc, uh, disc based games, CDs and super CDs, um, much more effectively after this repair. So just to get started, some of the things you'll need to do this job is a um, 5 8 millimeter game bit. This is the same thing you would use for like Nintendo cartridges, and that is to get yourself into the bottom of the Turbo Duo system, which I'll show you here in a moment. Uh, mine comes with a handle. They don't always necessarily. Um, I, I like using this style. Um, we'll just need a traditional Phillips head screwdriver. Nothing special there. Um, also been recommended to use needle nose pliers to get some of the connectors off, so I'll potentially be using those as well. And then most importantly, you need the replacement part, which is the HOP-M3 laser. Uh, I think there's multiple different manufacturers for this. I don't think that's critical, just as long as it's this model number. This is the original replacement that the Turbo uses. So make sure that you order one of these. Um, I was able to get one of these off eBay. Probably cost me about 15 bucks shipped, so they're not very expensive. And uh, this is the most critical part that you'll need to replace um, as part of this surgery we're going to do today. So I've taken the liberty, just in the interest of time, of going ahead and removing the five security bit screws on the bottom of the system already, um, but I'll show you the locations of those. So um, as you can see, this is a US Turbo Duo system, um, and it has a security bit here, um, up here in the top, this top square here, also on this corresponding side over here, down in this bottom right corner, and then there is one more located in the center here. So five total. Um, they're just these little security bit head screws. And you'll remove all five of those and that will enable you to take off the cover of the system. So I'm gonna be very delicate here because I've already got it loose. And we'll go ahead and peel off the lid of the turbo. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Um, let's see here, there we go. All right, so a couple things about my duo is it has had some modifications done to it. So you'll notice a couple extra wires on this system that not all would have. So I'm gonna just delicately set the lid um, in this back corner here, being careful not to stretch this wire. So just, just so you know, your system may not have this. Um, this is a uh, region switch that's been added on the back of my duo here. You can see the little switch. Um, and ultimately that enables me to play Japanese PC Engine cue card games um, with a flick of a switch. So again, that's a mod that's been done to my system. Another mod that has been done in the past to my system is an RGB mod. So that is this control board here, which is running wires to the video output and to the motherboard of the system. Um, so again, once you crack your, your Duo system over, you won't necessarily see those two extra components that have been added to mine. So we're actually gonna be doing the bulk of our work in this top right corner of the system. This is where our laser lens is hiding underneath this cover here. Obviously this is your disc spinner where you load your disc. And primarily the first thing we need to do is remove just this protective cover uh, that sits on top of the laser. So my instruction I've read online on this is this literally just lifts off. We don't need to unscrew or unbolt anything. Um, so I'm going to delicately, again, try to do this with one hand. And I see one side, there we go, okay, yep, it just literally pops off. So just delicately remove your cover. It's this piece here, set that to the side. And this is ultimately what we're going to be replacing today, is this component here that holds the laser. Um, you wanna take note of where the laser is currently located on the spindle. So in most cases, it should be all the way fully retracted toward where the disc uh, will lay so that it can start out. This is the um, 
motor back here and the gears that turn the laser. We're actually not going to be doing anything to those today, but I just want you to be aware of what that component is and also that I've been told it's very fragile. So we want to be very delicate with that. So just to explain uh, kind of what this will look like, we are going to first remove very delicately this white um, connecting pin as well as the red connecting pin. That's where our needle nose pliers are going to come into play. I've been told these wires are extremely delicate that come out of it, so we don't want to disrupt any of those. I probably will put the camera down to actually do that function, just to be very careful and make sure I don't break anything. Um, once we remove those two wire components, we will next move to these two screws that are right here and right here. And my understanding, again, is that we only need to turn those counterclockwise about a quarter turn to release the... Um, Oh, I don't know what you would call this, just the mechanism that the laser slides on. So basically we're going to loosen this and this. It's going to enable the mechanism on both sides to pop up. And then once we're able to pop that up, we can slide the laser directly off those two spindles. Um, our new one will then slide back into place, tighten everything down, reconnect our two pins, and then put the cover back on uh, both covers for the laser lens as well as the cover for the units and cross our fingers that everything works correctly. <laughs> so that's kind of the general gist of what we're gonna to do today. Um, again, I'm going to pause here for a moment just to start working on the connectors here with my needle nose pliers. I wanna have full, full control over those um, and be very cautious when I go to remove those from the connectors. So bear with me one moment, we'll do a jump cut and see where we're at with the next step. Okay, just a short update here, I now have the white and red connectors off. That's these two right here that are kind of dangling. Um, they are incredibly tight and difficult to get out of there. <laughs> I was told this is probably the worst part of the job and I agree. So be very, very careful. I use the needle nose pliers. Uh, I use just my finger tips um, to wiggle the connectors out of there. They're very, very wedged in there and there's not a lot of leverage to work on that. Um, so. We're going to crack on to the next step, um, but overall be very, very careful because that part was difficult. Um, when you go to put the connectors back in place, this is the bottom side with the little ridges on it, and this is the top. So just something to remember whenever you go to reconnect it. Um, so next up, back on track, we're going to again turn these two screws counterclockwise. I could probably go ahead and do that part right now, if I can line up my vision here. Yep, and as you can see that little, that unlocks this little pin um, that holds this in place. And we'll do the same thing with this one. And again, just unlocks the two bars to get those free. Um, so again, the step we're going to do next is we're going to lift these up slightly, slide our old lens off the track, and then work the new lens back onto the track and start reassembly. Again, hoping everything goes smoothly, <laughs> but that's the next step in the process. So I'll uh, cut again and be back with you here shortly. All right, just another update. Things are going well uh, at this stage. So we have removed the old lens um, off the track and I have positioned the new lens in place on the new track as well. Um, went in pretty smoothly, just my only caution, and I'd heard this before, is that when you loosen these pins and lift up on this side, just know that the back side is not actually connected to anything, so those may slip out on you as well. There's one on this side of it as well, on the top, that uh, actually came loose whenever I lifted it up. So, easy to put back in place. You'll know that it's in the right position because everything will kind of snap back into place. Um, you'll also see looking at the edge of the old laser, how the new one uh, connects directly on top of the gear whenever you lower it back into place. Um, just make sure you're not dragging it along the gear whenever you slide it into place. You'll just position it, lower it back down, and it'll uh, go right into position. The only other step I'm going to take, I didn't call this out in the beginning, is I'm going to apply a little extra dielectric grease on the um, gear mechanism. It just looks like it's a little bit dry in the centerpiece especially. And then also um, the tracks on these had grease on them as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, dielectric grease onto those just to hopefully make things move a little bit smoother. I don't know if any of that was causing it to hang up before, but knowing that this is probably 25 year old grease on uh, these gears, it couldn't hurt to add a little bit of new uh, refreshment. So 
I'll be doing that here in a second, and then really we're gonna uh, we're ready to start reassembling and seeing where we're at. So essentially, what the next steps are is grease the two tracks and the gear. Um, I'm going to tighten these two screws back into position so that they hold the pins in place, and then we're going to reconnect our two white and red cables into here. Again, the red goes on the bottom, white on the top. Replace the lid on top of the mechanism here, and then um, screw the cover back down, and hopefully we'll have a good working Turbo Duo system here. So, don't know if I'll cut back in here while it's all disassembled, but if not, that's kind of the general process. Hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory from what you've seen so far. And um, next shot will most likely be the test of if this is going to work or not. So, be back with you here shortly. All right, so now that we have our Turbo Duo back reassembled and back together, it's time to test it out with the new lens in place. And just a disclaimer before we do our test is you may also have to adjust the potentiometers or pots on the system. Uh, just to recognize the new laser correctly, it may be a little bit out of adjustment. I'm not going to walk through the process of that in this video just because there's several other videos on YouTube that talk about just that part of the process. Um, but it can be a little fiddly, so just give you a little heads up on that. And uh, overall, let's go ahead and start with our test. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of uh, Dracula X Rondo of Blood, the classic Castlevania title that is originally an exclusive title for the PC Engine Super CD. So uh, let me go ahead and load that up, and we'll see how our system's doing with loading video, which was primarily the problem I was having when the lens was um, out of adjustment or wearing out. So give this just a moment to boot up. There is obviously still a little load time. And we have our Konami logo and happy little Konami sounds. It's a good sign. This game has the uh, German language introduction. That is a little bit annoying. But everything is loading with the opening video, which is good. So we're going to go ahead and go to our title screen here. A little bit of a creaky door. And we'll start a new file so I can play the intro video here. Uh, if it'll let me... this to test. Alright, let's see how it does with this video. So this is primarily the introduction to the game, and again, this is the type of video that the system would hang on before with the old laser. Still a little bit of load time, but that's normal for the duo and just kind of the era of these first-gen CD systems. And here it comes. A nice little remix to the classic Castlevania music. So as you can see, everything seems to be functioning great. Uh, this is really what I was hoping for with this repair. And hopefully this video was helpful for your own system. This is something that you need to do to your own uh, Turbo or NEC PC Engine CD unit. So that about does it. I'll let this play out. And thank you very much for watching. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you soon. Have a great day or night wherever you are.